I am a minister in the Scottish Senate in Glasgow or thereabouts. Um, Gifnick is three quarters of my post and Moss Park is one quarter. Um, I was called to the two churches, um, the 75-25% split, um, but we are now part of a six church cluster and so come this year I will get a third church into my role. I love preaching and I think that um, part of the preaching is the preparation, the study, the learning and I think it's partly because I love to learn. I love the idea that I can be part of helping the people around me and to be pointing in a, in a direction because I know, I know that they want to go in that direction. I think that sometimes they just need that encouragement and maybe sometimes even that permission to say, we're aiming, let's go. So that's probably my favourite. Followed closely by working with children because that never gets boring. So I think that some of the most challenging things are keeping that sense of wonder, keeping that sense of the kind of rainbow colour. Before I was a URC minister, I was a non-stipendiary MCC minister. It's a metropolitan community church. And there is something about being non-stipendiary in a quite alternative and quite young church that gives you total freedom. To be a minister in the traditional kind of old-fashioned church is a massive percentage of politics and diplomacy. If you let it, it can become so pedestrian that it kind of pours cold water on your passion and your, your, your spirituality. Because essentially, your spiritual journey has become your job. And that is a dangerous thing. And the reality is that a lot of our congregations, probably most of our congregations, are, compared to me, quite elderly. And older people flap and they get themselves all hot and bothered about little things. And then because I am the sort of person that is quite empathetic, as soon as somebody's upset, I'm upset. And I'm like, oh no, the end of the world is indeed nigh as you say. And then, you know, it blows over. And that has just been a, a great challenge to just learn to just be a little bit more waterproof. There's a part of me that wonders if we really ought not to be working towards there not being paid ministers in our churches because really I think how we structure the church right now has distracted us terribly from what we are called to be as a church. If you look at the, the vacancy lists, you know, we're sometimes calling people into pastorates of about 300 churches and you think, well, what, what ministry are, are you doing in there? In, in my ideal situation, like probably everybody in the church, if we could change one thing about ministry, we would just have one minister to one church. And that would give every church the chance to have that one person's undivided attention and we could really look at growth. I think if you are being called into ministry, it is happening for a reason. And if you're the sort of person that is thinking, no, really, there must be some mistake then you're almost certainly the right person because I think yeah I think a little bit of resistance to it is probably no bad thing don't ever let yourself lose that sense of calling because that that time between when you first start going oh I think I'm being led in a direction to to the various conferences and, and meetings and, and, and votes and everything throughout all that time you've got that sense of excitement you've got the sense of God is calling me to this place and and I can do this or I, I really can't do this but I'm gonna do it anyway but being a minister can easily grind that out of you if you don't hold on to that that magical sense of calling and and that is going to be easier said than done but it's just about coming back to it and just being like, if God is doing something and I get to be part of that, then yeah, hold on to that. Yeah.